Hey guys, so we actually have news on a new summonable LR coming to JP Dokkan, uh, which should be coming out, I think, probably tomorrow. Uh, usually what happens is we get the Twitter preview, uh, you know, the night before the unit actually debuts in the game. Uh, so for now, we have the Twitter information, but tomorrow we should have the data download. Um, I presume that uh, because of the new safety net feature that was implemented into the game for JP, uh, people aren't going to be able to just immediately hop in with like rainbow showcases and stuff. So it's going to be a bit of a different landscape moving forward here. But, um, but let's go ahead and take a look at what this guy does nonetheless. I have my own translations up here. So it is Turles and like, I guess the way you could translate this is Turles' army because technically that's what this says. But I believe the English Funimation dub translation of what this is is like the Turles Crusher Corpse or something like that. It's, it's probably what that's probably what it's going to end, end up being uh, when it comes to global. Uh, but here we go. So Turles' army, uh, Universe's top destroyers. Their leader skill is Terrifying Conquerors, Category Key plus 4, HP attack and defense plus 130, and then uh, Extreme STR types key plus 4, and then it should be 100. I put a note down here. Um, so uh, Extreme STR types key plus 4, HP attack and defense plus 100%. And then Super Attacks are the Calamity Blaster for 12 key. Uh, causes colossal damage with a medium chance to stun. Um, so nothing too crazy right there, right? Eating key is the Crusher Genocide, raises attack for one turn and causes Mega Colossal damage with a high chance to stun. So high chance to stun is definitely you know pretty good, especially in something like Super Battle Road where uh, you know you get a stun on an enemy, you're basically safe for the turn. So um, and then the passive. Now here's where things get kind of ridiculous. Uh, so Super Combat Group, attack and defense plus 130%. So as an LR, we can take a look at his stats here. So just you know, assume at Rainbow he's going to have an extra 5,000 in each of these stats, approximately. His defense is going to be over 14,000, right? If we go off of, you know, just 5,000 at all these stats. Over 20,000 attack. So that's, you know, real summonable LR stats right here. Um, so this 130% attack and defense, it's very, very significant. You take, you take a look at uh, the, th the third year LRs, you know, the uh, It Vegito and Physical Gogeta. And you guys know how good those units are defensively. You know, they start to turn out like 180k defense with level 10 links. So this guy is going to be around that same area. Um, Terrifying Conquerors, category allies key plus 3 and attack and defense plus 30%. So not only is he getting 130% just baseline, he's also getting this. Because remember, he's getting his own support buff. Attack and defense plus 30% and 3 key. That's ridiculous. This is, this is a ridiculous buff. Terrifying Conquerors. We'll take a look at the category in a second, but... Even if this was not, uh, uh, even if this was not applicable to his allies, and it was just he himself getting this buff, like he he basically is starting the turn at 160 160 uh, percent attack and defense and three key. Hello, <laughs> summonable LR here. Um, all right, and then next he gets key plus six and attacks effective against all types when attacking an enemy in the stunned status. So that's similar to um, how Jiren also does that. Well, Jiren does a guaranteed... Does Jiren do a guaranteed crits against... Uh, no, 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 no. Jiren does... Yeah, no, sorry. I'm getting mixed up. The STR Jiren does guaranteed crits against stunned enemies, correct? So, this is very similar to how that works, except instead of crits, these are going to be super effective against all types of damage, which is still very, very good, right? Um, and then he also gets attacks effective against all types and high chance to perform an additional super attack when key is 24 so if you're able to get this guy 24 key, you know, he's going to have guaranteed attack effective against all types, even if you're not going up against a stunned uh, enemy, and a high chance to perform an additional super attack, which is one of the reasons why they probably did not make this some ridiculous ability on the 12 key super attack, because if he's getting 24 key every turn, and you have him in a, an optimal setup where he's always getting this, he's going to be doing, you know, a high chance, which is, I think it's 50% of an additional super. So. That's why I believe they only gave him a high, a medium chance to stun on the 12 key super attack there. That's his passive, pretty ridiculous. Uh, and he also has an active skill, Fruit of the Tree of Might. Uh, the conditions are able to be used when HP is 60% or below, or once eight turns have passed from the start of battle. And this is interesting because he can actually use this twice. I don't believe there is another active skill in the game that you can use more than once. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm not sure. Uh, so that's cool to see this, you know, so, again, every time they introduce something new, a new mechanic, a new type of way to use an ability, I'm all for it because it expands the way that the game is played. So the ability is very simple. He just gains 24 key. <laughs> right, he just gains max key. So, yeah, uh, 
this is going to activate the last part of his passive, which means once you activate this active skill, he has attacks effect attacks effective against all types and a high chance to perform additional super attack. So this is a pretty powerful active skill. Now the conditions, right? The conditions aren't really that great. Honestly, I'm gonna have to say that. Um, falling below 60% health is not, you know, it's not too difficult to do, especially in like the harder modes, like extremes for battle road. You're definitely gonna have instances where you fall below 60% health. It's just, it's just how it is. Um, eight turns is very difficult to obtain in a lot of these uh, modes. So, I don't know. I mean, hey, at, at least it wasn't just 60% or, or uh, below, right? At least they have a secondary, uh, you know, option here just in general. Because if you're going up against a Legendary Goku event and or something like an Event Dragon Mystery or one of those longer events, and you're just like playing around, you're not even like you're just steamrolling the event, and you don't really have an opportunity to fall below 60% health, you can at least make use of this secondary condition um, and just use this, use this after eight turns have passed, which I think is fine. Um, but as a to as like as a whole, the these conditions as a whole, I wouldn't say they're stellar. Um, but I wouldn't say they're like LR Gohan levels of bad, <laughs> like LR EGL Gohan levels of bad. They're definitely not that bad. Um, so now uh, we have links. Yeah, these links are pretty good. Brutal beatdown, prepared for battle, big bad bosses, thirst for conquest, destroyers of the universe, fierce battle, and legendary power. And then for categories, he's on the Terrifying Conquerors category, Movie Bosses, Joint Forces, and Final Trump Card. So, to me, after looking at this unit as a complete package, the thing that stands out the most to me are his links. His links are very, very good. Um, he actually does have Prepare for Battle. He does have Big Bad Bosses, which I was very scared they weren't going to give him Big Bad Bosses um, because of the, all the henchmen in the card. But they did that for Bojack, so I guess it's not too surprising. Um, I... These first battle legend, like all these links are insanely good. I and mean, we can take a look at his category. So they clearly want you to run this kind of terrifying conquerors category, right? Um, well, guess what? Let's take a look at Cooler's links real quick, okay? Actually, we'll put it to English so that's easier for you guys to see this global. Um, okay, so first for conquest, first for conquest, big bad bosses, big bad bosses, brutal beatdown, brutal beatdown. Uh, fierce battle, fierce battle. So these guys share four attack links. <sighs> so uh, th th these aren't even leveled up. So but prior to being leveled up, right? 15, 40, 50, 65%. Level one links, well I guess technically not big bad bosses because you wouldn't be able to have this linked up, but let's just assume they're under the threshold. Level one links. What, is, what did I just say? 65% attack? These guys are sharing 65% attack worthy of links. And I, I'm just, I'm just going to estimate at level 10, that's probably going to jump up to like 80%. So the leader of the category in Cooler is sharing about 80% attack in links with this LR, who's getting 130% and an, extra, and an extra 30% attack and defense from his passive. Keep in mind, Cooler is buffing um, Terrifying Conquerors when you're going up against multiple uh, enemies. So if you're in Super Battle Road and you have a rotation of Cooler and Turles, this Turles' defense is going to be like 250k or something like r ridiculous. Like not even, it's gonna be it's gonna be absurd. Um, so I really like the way they designed this unit. They clearly, you know, uh, they clearly made him a Terrifying Conqueror support unit, and they made him able to be fit on the Terrifying Conqueror's category, like on purpose. It wasn't it wasn't an accident? And we can take a look at a lot of the other units on here as well. I mean, if you really want to go all out. Um, you could just put him alongside this guy, right? I'm not the biggest fan of this Turles because he has like zero defense, but if you wanted to get the maximum amount um, of use out of this guy as you possibly could, I'm pretty sure they share all seven links, right? Uh, the Destroyers of the Universe. Oh, this guy is same warrior race. He has prepare for battle, um, thirst for conquest, brutal beatdown, big bad bosses, and fierce battle. So the only link they're not sharing, obviously, Legendary Power, because Turles has Sane Warrior Race, but they share six out of seven links together. Plus, Turles is giving the 40% uh, um, the forty percent and three key support to this guy. I mean, this is a rotation, like Turles LR and then the AGL Turles. This could potentially be, like, turn one, eight million attacks that for this guy. Like, I don't know. Maybe it is. <laughs> like, I, th th this guy seems ridiculous to me. Um, 
And the one thing I will say is that uh, he is sort of limited to being ran on the Terrifying Conquerors category. So this guy kind of reminds me of the LR Androids, and that the LR Androids only want to be around in the Androids category. But it, honestly, just judging how ridiculous this unit is and how just busted he is, I'm okay with that. Because this guy was a general support unit for like any category, and he was this good. He, he, you would just run him on every team. Like, <laughs> you just would. So um, I actually really like the way that they designed this guy. I like the fact that his active skill has two uses to it, and it's not, you know, it's not ridiculously overpowered. But it does play into how he wants to be used based off of you know, the last part of his passive here. So I think that's all I have to say about this guy. But uh, the Terrifying Conquerors category definitely can uh, get fleshed out more. A lot of these units on this, on this um, category are sort of like the fodder, like R, Zarbons, Captain Guinea, who's like Android 20. Like all these Frieza henchmen, you know, like none of these guys are actually like you open this category list and you look at this category and it's like, oh, my God, they have so many characters when in reality, 80% of this list are just unusable N's and R characters. So I would like to see them expand more on this category. I mean, even LR Baby would probably pair up really well with this guy. So I think in the future we can definitely get a new version of like the Demon King Piccolo LR, maybe just a, a young LR Demon King Piccolo. Uh, definitely worthy of a Dokkan Fest LR, I would say, or even just a regular Dokkan Fest if they want to do that. So, yeah, uh, this, like, I, I've been also saying for like six years at this point, we need a Dokkan Fest Captain Ginyu, who's like, I, I'm flabbergasted that that hasn't happened yet, because he would sell insanely well in Japan. So, um, that's all I have to say about this. Let me know down below if you guys agree, disagree, uh, like this video, whatever you want. Um, but I'm excited for this guy. Um, Turles uh, hasn't gotten a new unit, I believe, since that AGL Turles, right? But, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. See you all in the next one.